Hey, it's Tyler, and this is Zig for the Uninitiated. In our last video, we discussed a practical example around stacks and heaps, and we talked about what you'd use those for and how to use them. I highly recommend going back and watching the previous few videos because it really leads up to that last one if you haven't watched it yet. Now, today we're going to talk about something slightly different, still in the vein of allocators, uh, which is where we've been really heading down. And we're going to talk about memory faults. So in when you're programming, and particularly when using allocators, there are a few uh, maybe foot guns or traps or things that trip you up, particularly if you're not used to uh, having to manage your memory manually. Um, a lot of languages, let's say like Python, they will keep track of your memory for you in a garbage collector. And when you're done with it, when you stop using a variable and it goes out of scope, it'll eventually be cleaned up. And Zig, that's not the case. You have full control over the memory in the heap. And that's a lot of power. And with that power comes responsibility to use it correctly. Uh, other languages like Rust or C++, they offer um, ability to what they, is called RAII or Resource Acquisition is Initialization. It's an acronym. It doesn't really make sense for what it is, but they provide what's called destructors. And so when something goes out of scope, it gets destroyed. Um, and so your memory is kind of managed that way too, though it's it's much more manual. You have options to be manually memory managed as opposed to like Python. And Zig, you don't get that. What you have is you telling the computer, I want to free this, I want to I want to allocate this, I want to free this. So let's let's take a look at what can happen when you make mistakes around that, how you make mistakes and how Zig can help you, or how the Zig compiler, how some of the Zig uh, allocators in the standard library help you discover that. So here we have a simple program, and it's going to just print out two little messages. We have message one and message two. Okay, and at the beginning, we're just create a general purpose allocator. We haven't talked about what allocators you should use. Zig provides lots of different allocators out of the box. And we're going to talk about that in a future video, which allocators you should use. And really, I'm excited because I want to go just in depth into how the allocators work and why you might want to use one over the other. But we haven't gotten there yet. So for this exercise, we're going to use the general purpose allocator, which works well for our um, explanation. So the general purpose allocator, uh, you create it, the GPA, and then in Zig, you get the allocator by saying, hey, I want an allocator from there, okay? So then after that, don't worry about the defer. The defer is just doing cleanups and detecting leaks. And so we'll talk about that. That's part of what Zig, uh, the standard library provides to help find these memory issues. But we'll talk about that later. Okay, so now we get the standard out which is just the file. We're gonna get the file descriptor to write out, to standard out. And we're gonna call get message. Right now we're gonna treat get message as a black box. What that means is we're not gonna look into it, but we'll see that it takes an allocator and it gives us a slice of bytes. So we're gonna say, okay, this is allocating something on the heap and we're getting a pointer to that thing on the heap, right? Remember that a slice is a sometimes could be considered a fat pointer. It's a pointer plus a length. And so we, we know that we're getting a pointer to something and that something is on the heap. Then we're going to free it and they're going to write. Now that should be setting up your alarm bells here. But if it isn't, let's just demonstrate what happens here. We're going to build our project. So zig build. Let's run it. Memory faults. And we're going to get a panic. Panic is Zig's way of saying it reached an unrecoverable error. And in fact, it reached unreachable code. If we look through the stack here, we're going to see that inside the right call, there was something that was wrong. And so what went wrong? Well, we took the message, we freed it, and then we tried to write it. This is called a use after free. What it means is that we're using memory after we have freed it, right? We've allocated it, and then we told the allocator we don't need this anymore. 
and then we tried using it. And that's a big no-no, because if we wanted to keep using it, we shouldn't have freed it. Now, there's some ways we could get around this. We could move it down here so that we would um, not have a use after free anymore. We would be writing it, and then we'd be freeing it. But in long code bases, there might be times where you allocate something, and a long ways down, you're using it still, and it's you know much later in the function, right? What if this is like 100 lines, right? How do we know when we create this that we're actually going to free it? That's what's nice about Zig's defer statement. When you make a defer statement, as we talked about in the last video, what you're saying is, I want to do this thing, but I want to do it once we exit scope. So in this case, once the function returns, I want you to go back and execute this. And what's nice about that is that now we can, even if there's a hundred lines of code that needs to still use message one, we can pair up the freeing of message one with its allocation. And so when we look at it, we should be able to see every allocation should have a free. All right, so now that we have put this defer here, we've been telling uh, the code that, hey, we're going to free this, but at the end. And so now we can write um, knowing that message one will eventually be freed. So let's rebuild our code and let's run it. So we get another error. What's our error? We go up here. We see right here, error GPA. That means the general purpose allocator. Double free detected. And it's going to tell you allocation that was um, given. So it's going to tell you it was when we were allocating in the format.zig file, alloc print. But in particular, in memory faults line 36, we see the format alloc print. And we even see here on line 19, it was for message one. Okay, well, we know that message one is allocated on the heap, so we know that we freed this twice now, or at least it's indicating that, hey, this has been freed twice. And in fact, it tells you, hey, here's the first free. First free is on line 26, and the second free is on line 20. So let's take a look at that. We go to line 26. You see, oh yeah, look, we were making message two, but then we freed message one here. We don't want to free message one. Okay, so we're going to delete that. And now you say, hey, why was um, why was this one considered the first free and this one the second free when this one is written first? Well, that's because when you write defer statements, they are executed in reverse instantiation order. And so that means whatever is deferred last is going to be executed first. So it's like a stack. And that makes sense because sometimes you might defer, defer the, the removal of something that depends on something further up in the code, right? So if it's dependent on another thing that's been allocated, you don't want to deallocate that thing first and then deallocate the thing that, it's depended, that depends on it. It can cause problems. So you want to go backwards. So we're going to delete that line. And does that fix our issues? Let's build. And let's run it again. We get another error. And this time, we're getting it from the GPA. It says error GPA memory address. It gives us an address. And it says it leaked. If we look at where it says it leaked, whoops. We'll see that it's saying, hey, Line 323, you're allocating here message two. We say, okay, we knew we were allocating message two. So yeah, like message two isn't freed because I deleted it, remember? So we're going to put it in here. We're going to make sure we're uh, freeing the right thing. And we'll save. And let's rerun. Let's rebuild and run. And there we go. We get our output like we wanted. 
No memory errors. Perfect. So there's a few tools that Zig provides to help us look for these kinds of memory errors. In particular, the general purpose allocator uh, provides an interface to allow you to detect links, detect leaks um, before you, you close out. And so once you're done with the allocator, your program's running out, you can say, hey, detect leaks, and it will do that for you, okay? It also, as we saw, indicate where there's been a double free. The only thing that it doesn't really keep track of, as far as I can tell, is the use after free. So that's been a quick introduction into a few memory uh, issues that can happen. So I think the takeaway is remember to use your defers to free. Make sure that you do free your memory and don't free it twice. Okay, so it's the things you have to start thinking about when you're using this manual memory management. All right, well, this is it for the video. Thanks for watching. Um, I'm sorry it's been a little later than the last few videos. I'm hopefully I'll be able to get a few more out. We've had a bit a busier life um, right now. I just had a new baby, and that that takes priority. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to get another video out here soon. If you'd like to support me, it really helps just to see a comment, uh, and if it's something that you like, let me know. If there's something that you, more you want to see, let me know too. You can comment on the video. You can comment on my Discord, which is on the description. Um, happy coding.